Hello there and welcome back. Here we are, work continues on our 1977 Gottlieb electromechanical machine. I have uh, gone through it lightly with the magic eraser and kind of cleaned the play field a bit and then put two coats of wax on it. So what you're seeing here is just a little kind of light polishing with one of these microfiber cloths just going over it getting the play field kind of nice and smooth it's uh, far from perfect but it's definitely an improvement over when we pulled it out of the warehouse and I wanted to take this time to kind of talk a little bit about <clears throat> my, my approach to working on pinball machines and the different approaches that different people may have because uh, you know, once you get into this community you'll find that there's several different kinds of pinball enthusiasts and uh, you could make a, a close comparison between the pinball community and say car enthusiasts because there's some similarities in the way they approach collecting and restoring uh, games like people would with cars in the car community you have people that are into cars to drive them and to appreciate them as they were in their heyday. Then you have other people who want to restore the cars to just totally original factory exact like they were and then stick them in some kind of a garage and, and never ride them or drive them. And then you have people that want to take uh, vintage cars and hop them up and add that all the latest technology the people that do the resto mods and things like that you will find that in the pinball community you have those same types of collectors too although I don't know if if there's a exact different name for them but you have people that will take games and and they have to have them completely stock completely original and they have to be perfect and there cannot be a single blemish on them or it's sacrilege and and uh, not good up to their standards. And then you have um, the people that will take a, a game that they really really enjoy and they will just mod it. They will add all kinds of extra things. Uh, they'll stick hallmark ornaments on it. They'll they'll have all kinds of doohickeys on the play fields jutting out here and there. And they'll they'll go to Walmart or Toys R Us and they'll buy little action figures and things like that. And they'll mount everything all over the game. And it just becomes this kind of homage to a theme or a particular game that they really like. None of that necessarily uh, enhances gameplay, but it, it it addresses their overall appeal and what what they like about the game. And then you you know you have the kind of in the middle people, which are just the players, people that remember playing these machines the way they the way they were, and just want a good playing machine. And and I fall into that category. I kind of work with what I have. If I have a really good quality machine, I'll definitely try to restore it as best I can, but I'm not trying to make it 100% original, and I'm not going to kill myself uh, if, it, if it's not like that. My main focus is on playability. So if I have a beat-up game that's, that's got a lot of problems with it, I'm not going to go over it with a microscope. It's just not worth it to me. So sometimes in some of my videos you may see me hacking on boards and I'm not showing as much care as I would say if I was hacking on some kind of $10,000 game or something super rare. I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to spend that much time messing with, uh, say, an MPU board that, that I could replace for $200. I'm not going to spend 10 hours going over it with a toothbrush to make it perfect. I'm going to do what I can to get it working and try to get it back in the game. So, uh, I may catch some criticism from people that, you know, see me working on a, a machine here or there, and I'm not necessarily treating it with the maximum amount of respect or consideration that I could if I wanted to, to have it function 100% perfectly. But it depends on, it, it varies from game to game. We look at a game like like this, the, uh, the Scott Lee Jet Spin. This is a nice game. I'm, gonna, I'm likely to spend a little bit more time making it look good. I mean, uh, we've got a really nice back glass that is in really good shape and um, 
I'll spend some time trying to make this thing nice. I'll even clean up the cabinet, try to make it as nice, close to original as I can. I'm not going to kill myself on this game and try to make it like it rolled off the factory floor yesterday. Although this is a pretty good condition game. It's atypical, but it still has its problems. There's very little wear on the play field. There's a, there's a spot right here that probably um, in a future episode I'm going to, to work on mixing paint and patching that. And uh, there's another there's other problems with these, uh, these inserts right here. I don't know if you can see in the video, but they're a little bit concave. And they affect the playability of the game. So at some point, I'm going to pop these things out and I'm going to level them and put them back in. And I'll do a little series on that. Uh, am I going to tear the entire play field down, clear coat it, and make it even better than it was? No. That's just not the type of collector that I am. I respect that there are other people out there that will take these games, tear them down, make them even better than they were originally, and they're going to play differently, differently than the original game. You know, some of these people will take these things and they'll clear coat them and they'll just make them just silky smooth and magical. And that's awesome. Some people will put bigger coils in the machine and give the flippers even more power or tap into the, the transformer and do some things like that. Uh, I generally try to just bring the games back to their original glory and make them play the way they were originally intended to. I'm not, uh, I'm, I don't mean to, I'm not taken away from the other people that want to do more, but at the same time I would ask those people, you know, cut me some slack because it, there's different types of collectors. Some of us are going to be more meticulous or less meticulous. And uh, if you see me do a video where I'm, I'm fiddling with a board and I do something that you would not do, take into account the context too. If I'm, you know, if I'm hacking on a medieval madness uh, or some Capcom Big Bang bar and the board, you know, there's only 180 of these boards in existence, well, yeah, well then, okay, that would be stupid for me to, to you know, take a screwdriver and start prying bridge rectifiers off. But if if I'm working on, on the, a machine where the MPU board is arguably maybe not even salvageable, I may fiddle around with it and manhandle it a little bit more. So that's kind of my approach towards working on these machines. Uh, also, I'm not really trying to do this magnificent industry finest tutorial. I'm just kind of documenting what I'm doing. I make a lot of mistakes and I learn a lot along the way. I'm not suggesting that my little how-to guides are the de facto standard. It's more just a, a little snapshot in time of what I happen to be doing to my machines. And I think that anybody that might criticize me can certainly relate to making a lot of the same mistakes. Maybe they just decided they didn't have a camera on at the time and maybe this is my <laughs> problem of having the foolishness to want to actually record these things and then put them up online and get myself raked over the coals because I'm doing something stupid, but what the hell, you know, if, if one or two people like it, that's good enough for me. It's worth a little bit of extra effort. So here I am with uh, the Gottlieb Jet Spin. I'm pretty pleased it's come out nice. The play field is, um, it's got really nice color to it. It's still going to need a little bit more work to make it play super perfect, but um, we've got a game that's starting to look good, and that's not bad from pulling it out of this little warehouse and uh, slowly rebuilding it. One of the things I want to point out is um, I've got some LEDs in this, which, again, this might be sacrilege, and this might be right in contrast to what I just said about mainly working on function and not form. But it was almost like a kind of a, a fun experiment. I picked up some LEDs from Cointaker and wanted to see how they look. So we've got LEDs in the play field. We've also got some LEDs in the back glass. And I really like how the cooler, higher color temperature LEDs make these purples and these greens pop out. I just think that's really, really cool. So in the jet spin are incandescent lights and you can see how they're a little bit more yellow but if you look up further up most of the figures are lit 
by LEDs and they've got definitely more of a blue or white tint to them. So I'm going to continue to play around with this. Maybe I will put incandescence back in the game, but I was just playing around having fun seeing. So that's kind of where I'm at and uh, I hope you like it and stay tuned and I'll post more as long as people want to see it. Thanks very much.